right now, we are going to actually give you a little bit of a, you know, different taste of Adobe. Um, we are going to be joined... Uh, By Vladimir Petkovic. That's the one. Vladimir Petkovic um, is, if I have the correct, the creative director um, for Stager, uh, for, for Substance 3D Stager. Um, and it's going to basically run us through uh, a 45 minute demo uh, on how to get portfolio worthy shots in there. Um, do we have Vladimir in the call already? Well, that's a question that I forward to Zeb. Zeb? Zeb! Is, is Vladimir with us already? Yes! Yes! Now hey. we only need sound in here. How's it going, guys? There ah. we go. Hey, Vlad, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure having you. Um, you're in LA right now, right? I'm in San Francisco, actually. San Francisco, okay. Oh, man. That sounds fantastic. West Coast seems like such a good time. Um, oh, it's beautiful. Hell yeah. Um, Vlad. Tell us a little bit about yourself and the viewers, especially what you're doing uh, and why are you here. Of course. So my name is Vlad. I'm a creative director at Adobe Substance uh, 3D, or as we call our, you know, our division here at Adobe. Uh, it's called 3D and Immersive. Uh, so I work closely with um, product managers and developers to make sure that all the features we are implementing in our tools make sense from the user perspective. And today I have an exciting topic to share with you guys, and uh, that is how to use some of our Substance tools to produce realistic shots for your portfolio. And so at this point, maybe we can jump into some of the slides. Uh, I'll be quick, I promise. Absolutely. And then uh, I'll show you a demo. <laughs> Woo. Here we go. There we go. Oh, wow, that's a lot of red. Uh, can we go to the next slide? <laughs> you did these. <laughs> Welcome to Adobe. The, a color. <laughs> that is true. It, it's Adobe's red color. <laughs> so. Alrighty. Um, so, um, yes, as I said, I'm a creative director here at Adobe. Uh, we have about a dozen artists in our team. And so we work very closely to developers. That's our uh, you know, kind of main objective, although we have a lot of roles. So before I jump into the topic uh, of uh, today's session, I would like to just say a couple of words uh, about our tools. So on the next slide, um, you can see that here at Adobe, we are developing uh, a Substance 3D ecosystem, as we call it. And that's a suite of uh, four different tools uh, with the fifth one, which is currently in the development. So uh, Adobe Substance 3D Designer is essentially a core engine uh, of the whole ecosystem. So it's a node-based uh, parametric tool, uh, which allows you to create very sophisticated materials, uh, 3D models, uh, environment lights, etc. Uh, and then, uh, you know, those, uh, that kind of content can be used throughout the system. And also we do support, uh, you know, like native integration of, uh, you know, these materials in pretty much any major 3D app. Then we have uh, 3D Sampler, which is another way how you can uh, create materials and the lights but it's more free form. It's more catered to uh, you know, creatives. So for instance, you can create a beautiful, realistic 3D material using a single photo as an input, something that you might've taken with your iPhone. Uh, Substance 3D Painter is our flagship tool uh, and it allows you to bring in your 3D model and then create beautiful textures uh, yep. for it. <laughs> and today's topic is going to be around 3D Stager uh, which is essentially a, a tool where exactly <laughs> where you can assemble a scene using 3D models. You can apply some materials, play with lights, frame your camera, and essentially act as a photographer in a way. You know, you can mm. stage your your scene in a really beautiful way, and then produce very realistic shots. So this is essentially what we're going to talk about. So on the next slide. Uh, you're going to be able to see an example of a portfolio. Uh, so what is portfolio? If you are an artist, any kind of artist, uh, you at some point are gonna need to have a collection of your best works. And this is something that you can present to the client and it kind of highlights all the skills that you have as an artist. So in case of 3D artists, those skills cover 3D modeling, lighting, 
you know, texturing skills, how you can compose a shot, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. Uh, and there are different kinds of uh, portfolios. So here we can see something that we, we are uh, calling virtual photography. Uh, so yeah, on the previous slide. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> So here we can see uh, shots which are made to look like real photos, and uh, essentially they are, uh, you know, uh, you know something that looks like uh, like real photography, and mm -hmm. those are product shots, even though they're made in three D. But on the next slide, we can see something a little bit different. So this is more catered to maybe gaming or VFX, you know, stuff like that. Uh, something that's more creative. So these, you know, these kind of objects don't necessarily exist in real life. But that's yeah. the beauty of 3D. You can, you know, just kind of go crazy. You can do whatever you like. Um, mm -hmm. And so on the final slide, uh, I'm going to show you uh, this uh, little robot that I made. And this is essentially uh, going to be our hero, uh, which I'm going to use to kind of show you how you can produce shots like this. So there's a range of, you know, different types of, uh, of shots that you can make. So the left hand side, you can see something that looks almost like a studio shot. Um, so I'm gonna borrow a lot from traditional photography, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with something like, you know, three point lighting system. So if you do have some kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, experience as a photographer, you can absolutely use that in 3D. And on the right hand side, you can see slightly more complex use cases where you can compose the, the you know the same hero asset with a photo in the background, and you know therefore you can give it a little bit of context. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the upper right corner, we can see a, a scene which is completely made in 3D. Well, mine is the sky, so that's probably <laughs> the most complex use case. Uh, so as you can see, there's a range of complexity which uh, you know you can kind of do. Yes. All right. Um, so enough uh, with the slides. Let's uh, jump into the demo. <laughs> It's a pre-recorded video, but I'm going to do a live voiceover and explain step by step what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Easy enough. Let's jump right into it. Yeah. All right. So here uh, you can see Substance Painter, and currently this object doesn't have any materials, so it kind of looks bland. Uh, and in a second, I'm going to turn on all the materials, and wow, it looks way different, right? <laughs> way more realistic. And this kind of shows you the power of, you know, of uh, highly detailed and realistic textures. And that's exactly what, what you can do using Substance Tools. Uh, kind of aim for, for something that looks very real. Here I'm using a very convenient feature, uh, and I'm sending my asset from Painter into Stager. Mm -hmm. So essentially, I'm going to get a package of geometry and all the textures that I made. So all of that is going to be loaded for me automatically in, um, in Substance Stager. Mm -hmm. And from there, uh, I'm going to be able to kind of start, you know, producing some realistic shots uh, using this hero asset. So this is essentially almost like a product that I'm trying to visualize in a way. Yeah. So currently, we're seeing, um, uh, as you call it, a real-time, uh, you know, viewport which doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. look, you know, very realistic, but it's very performant. So mm -hmm. you're able to, you know, kind of rotate the scene and looks, you know, uh, works very fast. But now what I'm doing, I turned on ray tracing. And so now Ooh. Stager is going to start computing all the beautiful effects, you know, yep. shadows, all the lighting in the scene. And immediately in a matter of seconds, uh, you get something that looks, you know, quite realistic. Yeah. Uh, when you create a new scene in Stager, you immediately have something that's called an environment light. Mm -hmm. So this environment light is a spherical image, which is wrapped around the scene, almost like a dome. And so all the lights, reflections, everything you're seeing comes from that environment light. And so as you can see, I'm kind of playing around with the rotation of that light. So that mm -hmm. light, as the name suggests, is essentially emulating the whole environment. And this is very important because, uh, you know, in order to create something that looks realistic, uh, you need to have some content around, uh, you know, a single object, which we have in this case. Um, so just kind of playing around here with the assets, you know, uh, move it close to the ground. I have some reflections going on. Mm -hmm. uh, looks kind of cool, but I can also go further. So, for instance, you can change the color to maybe, you know, something that's, uh, you know, kind of bright. So really putting a highlight on your, you know, your, on your object, on your hero asset here. Fancy. This looks so amazing. I just put the, uh, the link for Substance 3D in the chat for anyone who's wondering where to find it. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. 
also, um, right. if you have any questions, put them in the chat, please, because uh, one of your team members, Vlad, uh, Michael Tanzillo, is in the chat to answer all your questions directly. So, yes, Mike is awesome. He's going to answer everything. And um, yeah, <laughs> pl be, please be free to ask questions. Uh, so like. right now, what you're seeing, uh, you can create a camera, mm -hmm. which is very similar to a physical camera. And uh, you can play with things like focal length. You can, you know, turn on depth of field. So you can play with really realistic, uh, you know, um, elements and, uh, you know, something that kind of, you know, you can, you can do in traditional photography as well. And so all of those little elements are, are going to bring the, uh, you know, realism to your scene. And so you can create something like shallow depth of field. If this is a miniature, for instance, so you can kind of play with the you know, intensity of the blur. Yeah. <laughs> And this is amazing. With our tools, uh, thank you. With our tools, we're trying to, you know, kind of take away the complexity, which is traditionally associated with, you know, with 3D graphics. Um, so right now you can see, okay, this is the environment light that I'm using. So all the reflections, which you can, you know, uh, the metal areas of this robot, uh, you know, you can kind of see how they're being reflected in, in, in those areas. And so this is, you know, kind of important, like what is going to be the light around your object? Mm -hmm. Because light is exposing the silhouette of, uh, you know, of anything that you have in 3D and in real life as well. I mean, this is how product photography works. You're essentially using light to, you know, kind of complement the silhouette. We do have uh, a number of different environment lights and you can just drag and drop them and it completely changes the, the overall look of the scene. Yeah. And this is... You can see how important it is to, to kind of really like tackle the, the you know, the light uh, in your scene. Oh, I do love the I'm just light that's showing... on the left right now. So on the left, you can see uh, all the starter content which comes with mm. Stager. And this section are those environment lights. So those, those are high dynamic range 360 images, which you can't really see them. But imagine a dome which is kind of wrapped around the scene. I mean, you could actually expose it, uh, but mm -hmm. in this case, I wanted to go with something that's very simple, very clean. Um, and I'm just kind of playing around, you know, with different types of lights. Um, so this would be probably the easiest way to, you know, kind of create a, um, you know, a, a shot, which is which is something you can use in, uh, you know, in your portfolio. But now I'm going into something a bit more complex. How can you create lights from scratch? And uh, so I'm going to try to create. Uh, almost like a uh, like a photo studio, but in 3D. And uh, mm -hmm. this is where Stager is really, really shines. Uh, so this is Adobe Substance 3D Assets uh, website, which is our collection of you know 3D models and materials. You, mm -hmm. you get an access uh, to all of this with a subscription. So I've just downloaded a very simple backdrop object, and now I'm going to drop this into the scene, and uh, you know slowly kind of creating a, you know almost like a digital studio here. Mm -hmm. And you'll see in a second. Um, you'll see in a second why uh, this is going to be important. So I have intentionally, you know, kind of turned the background into black because I don't want to have, uh, you know, any kind of um, influence from, you know, from the background. Mm -hmm. I want to, you know, really focus on the, all the three D objects that I have in the scene because now. Uh, all the reflections, all the light bouncing is going to come from physical objects that I'm adding into the scene. So this is slightly more complex workflow, but again, uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, you can just kind of play around and see what kind of results you can get. So now I'm kind of playing around with uh, the physical position of my mm -hmm. hero asset, trying to see what works, what doesn't work. And in a second, I'm going to start working on physical lights. And essentially, uh, this is a process which is very similar to product photography. So you are able to emulate something like soft boxes, umbrella lights. Uh, so if you do have any kind of you know uh, knowledge from traditional photography, mm -hmm. you can absolutely utilize that. So you can see now we have beautiful shadows which are being cast onto the backdrop because the backdrop is a it's an actual object, right? Yeah. And this is why it's so important to, you know, to actually have uh, objects in the scene. All right. Not sure what I'm doing right now, but we'll see. <laughs> Lock the camera. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. I like how so, much uh, ray tracing helps the image come to life because this right now is, I think, just a, a top 
down kind of a light or like shadow then boom ray tracing and it looks so much better exactly and it, it doesn't come as a surprise because ray tracing in 3d is made to essentially emulate reality you know the photo bouncing around yeah. the scene so it works in a very similar manner and this is why it looks so realistic um Ooh, right now okay. i have dropped a physical light uh so i've turned off the environment light because i, I want to take the full control over the you know the lighting system that i have in the scene so this is pretty much like a softbox scene you know in photography mm -hmm. so you can play around with the you know dimensions of this light you can move it around you can really pay attention you know how this light is gonna affect your uh your object which in this case is this uh, little drone asset and it's super, you know, it's super playful and fun. With the ray tracing turned on, you can immediately see, you know, the, you know, the result. Yeah. So if you make it bigger, you're gonna get soft shadows. If it's smaller, you're gonna get more defined shadows, which is exactly like in real life. Like imagine a flashlight, very small light source, super harsh shadows, or something like I don't know, overcast sky coming through the window, soft shadows. So same, pretty much same paradigm as real life, and this is why I love 3D. Hell yeah. Oh, it's so nice how so, you can immediately see the balance light and everything mm -hmm. coming in there right. with the physical object being in the back, how, how it's immediately taking that into account. It is really cool. And uh, it's also important to, to understand that not, uh, th everything comes into play here. It's not just the light. But as you mm -hmm. said, uh, Bas, it's very, it, it, for instance, the way the light is bouncing from objects uh, yeah. is also important. And this is why I have this backdrop because that backdrop essentially is almost like a mirror, right? Yeah. It's a very rough mirror in a way. It's bouncing the mm -hmm. light back. So had I made it red, for instance, I would have, you know, had a lot of like red bouncing. And you can actually use that, you know, use yeah. those plates to kind of add some, you know, some colors uh, into the scene. Um, all right, so uh, let's see. Uh, Right now, I have duplicated this light because I'm aiming to create a beautiful rim light on the side. So again, mm -hmm. it's the same paradigm as in real photography. Uh, I have the key light, uh, which is the main source of light. Currently, it's turned off because when you're working with lights, you want to make sure that you're, you only have your active light turned on. Everything else, all other light sources should be turned off yep. because that way you can really understand how this light is affecting your scene. And this is what I'm doing right now, you know, kind of working with this rim light um, and, uh, you know, kind of working with dimensions, just playing around. Now I'm going to jump into the camera and you oh, can see on so the left-hand side, right? Wow. I love working with lights. People are yeah. kind of afraid of, you know, uh, working with lights. And it does take a lot of, uh, you know, like different kinds of experience, but it's very rewarding. And you can see yeah. how you're exposing the silhouette of your objects by using those light sources. And now you can see how two lights work hand in hand with each other. So we have the key light, we have the rim light. I can immediately see that just being an incredible tool for, for people who are doing um, illustrative work and just to set up um, the basic scene, the whole light, because I know how many, how many illustrators are struggling especially young ones and those that aren't super experienced yet to set up light properly in a scene and like to to make it look realistic why not just pop it into into substance 3 stager um make a, have like very simple model and go from there it is gonna save you a lot of time and yeah. energy and yeah what what we've seen uh is that we have actually you know traditional concept artists you know people who are come from the painting background mm -hmm. and they <laughs> use stature to <laughs> exactly so you can use stature to essentially solve the perspective yeah and it can be simple boxes you know like let's yeah. say you're building i don't know maybe a cityscape you want to draw a cityscape you can drop some boxes around you know f you know solve the perspective get a rendering drop that in photoshop and then start painting over this but you don't yeah. have to think about perspective anymore it's sold for you so there are you know multiple ways how you can leverage you know 3d that's fascinating yeah so still working on lights uh it's all about you know kind of trying to complement the shape that you've you know kind of made uh 
And yeah, you can play with the exposure, we can, you can play with all of those things. And so now let's see how all these lights work uh, together. And so this is essentially what's called the three-point light system. You have the key light, you have the rim light, you have the fill light. Um, so maybe you can answer that because Michael could not give a full answer to this. Uh, the Broken Bird just asked, how many lights can I add into the scene? I'm not sure what is the exact number, but you can add a lot of lights. Okay. Like a lot. That's... More than you need. I <laughs> promise you, more than you need. <laughs> that's that's kind of what, what Michael answered. Um, Michael wrote, I haven't hit the limit in my work, but let me ask the devs if there is a limit. <laughs> I do believe there is a limit. Uh, at least there's a limit of how many lights you can show here in, in this ray tracing mode. Uh, I think I'm, I'm you know not lying to you. <laughs> But I think it's the number is something like 50 lights or a, a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. At this point, if you're going to use so many lights, you know, you might as well just use an environment light, which mm -hmm. is, you know, emulating the whole environment for you. Uh, yeah. Granted, yeah. sometimes you really want to take control if you have a big scene, maybe it's a cityscape. So there's a lot of light sources. You have cars, you have, you know, a lot of things like that. So then, yes, you're going to need probably a bunch of lights. Right now, what I'm trying to do, I am essentially still kind of building my, uh, you know, my little digital studio. So I'm building walls, uh, and those walls are going to be important because they're going to be reflected yeah. into my object. Because there's a lot of metal um, on my object, uh, I want to kind of make it a bit more bright. Because mm -hmm. right now, we are uh, kind of reflecting a lot of blackness from the background that we have right now, and so I'm just trying to show you why it's so important to kind of have a contained environment. So in a way, we're kind of reconstructing a, an environment light, which you have seen at the beginning of the session. But now we're kind of manually doing this everything, you know, <laughs> like one by one, adding little mm -hmm. details. And you can see now uh, what is the difference. You see how it looks much brighter than what we had before. And I'm actually going to show you this. So those are my plates grouped in a folder and I can hide them. So if I hide them, you can see now it looks much darker. Uh, mm -hmm. If you take a look at those metal parts right there, you know, so it's not just oh, yeah. about working with lights, it's about controlling the environment. And as you can see, I'm just using simple plates. So it's nothing like too complicated or too crazy. And it looks very messy, you know, it doesn't have to be you know, <laughs> super clean. Just going going for something very simple here. Mm -hmm. And now I'm gonna create a ceiling, so completely kind of you know wrap my my little guy uh, with uh, actual 3D objects. <laughs> so now I have full control over the environment, mm -hmm. and I can start playing with color. And uh, if I change the color of these plates, that color, just like in real life, with you know f photons bouncing around that some of that color is actually going to be translated onto your object. Yeah. And so this is going to be what I'm going to show next. Just kind of showing, uh, you know, how uh, these plates are affecting the, the overall look of the, mm -hmm. of the scene. And so now I'm uh, changing the material of some of these plates uh, just to show you how that ray tracing is going to pick up a little bit of color and bounce it back onto our object. So let's see how that mm -hmm. works. Sometimes it's a bit hard to see mm -hmm. the what little area like there. There's an overall bluish hue now to the picture. Yeah, I love how you are exactly. faking ambient occlusion right now. <laughs> uh huh. And if you think about it, in uh, you know, in um, everyday life, uh, mm -hmm. the sky, for instance, is casting this blue tone. Yeah. And so if you look at the shadows in real life, they're never going to be super black. They're going to be a shade of blue because yeah. of the sky. You know, the, the sky is essentially a huge diffused light, which is illuminating our world. And then you have the sun, of course. And now you can you can see Ooh, how you know, the tone is just being reflected into the metal surface of uh, this little guy. Yeah, right above the big lens, you can really see that it got really blue. Uh huh. 
So yeah, this is a creative preference, you know, what you're trying to do essentially. So I'm just going to fine tuning the, the whole scene and yeah. hopefully this is going to be interesting for, uh, for the audience to, to just see some of that. Well, I'm, t I'm counting on it, honestly. No one's complaining. <laughs> so that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, also hell yeah. Oh, wow. There's free trials. Uh, if you want to, uh, Michael, just put the link to those in the chat. So if you're interested, uh, like maybe wait to see what else you can do. So you kind of have that heads up tutorial head start yeah. and can really, really make good use of your trial. But then follow Michael's link and enjoy. So in a second, it's going to get a bit more complicated and a bit more crazy. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you're gonna you're gonna like this. Still I'm playing with you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you can actually turn your objects into light sources. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to use physical lights. Instead, you can use any object and uh, use a parameter of uh, its material, which is called emission. So if you turn on the emission, essentially, I'm turning those plates into huge light sources. So that's yet another way how you can, um, you know, kind of illuminate your scene. And that's what I'm doing right here, you know, kind of going over those plates and uh, giving them, you know, uh, s some illumination, uh, different colors uh, to, you know, to see what kind of results I can get. So going after maybe something like, uh, you know, like warmer tone, and you can see the whole scene is now, you know, kind of, uh, you know, uh, colored that way. And you can combine colder tones and warmer tones mm -hmm. uh, and just get something that looks pretty interesting. You see how I'm combining white illumination mm -hmm. from the left side and then you have warmer tone on the right side. This is so good. It's, it's, it's very fun, you know, because really stature gives you a full control over, you know, how, how your scene is going to look like. It just takes mm -hmm. a little bit of tweaking, a little, a little bit of you know, uh, playing around. Oh, yeah, more examples of very blue. Yeah, kind of playing with temperature of the light, you know, and uh, how you can combine, you know, warmer tones and colder tones together. Yeah. We also have Michael now in chat. Um, going more into the question about the the limit of the lights and when your when either the engine or the graphics card is going to give up and apparently they are at over 100 lights now and they're still ray tracing so they'll keep adding until they uh, hit the limit i wonder i wonder when that's going to happen if we're going to see that by the end of <laughs> by the end oh, of you can... the the uh, the preview <laughs> It, it, well, here it's not going to crash, but that's what we're trying to do, uh, you know, mm. the, our team. We're always pushing the boundaries of our software just to see where it's going to break. Mm. But thankfully, our developers are wizards, and what they do is incredible. I don't even understand, of course, like what kind of <laughs> magic comes into play here. Um, but, you know, they're pretty incredible. The rendering engine you're seeing here is made in-house. Mm. Uh, it's incredible. It's, um, I was actually going to ask about that. Mm -hmm. If we both have CPU and GPU version, this is the GPU version, and mm -hmm. it, it's insane. As you can see, like everything yeah. is almost real time. Granted, I have a beefy machine, <laughs> so <laughs> it, you know it's it's pretty powerful. But mm. um, yeah, you can even use your laptop. Uh, here, I'm showing how you can use a texture, uh, which you can apply to the emission. And so now, essentially, uh, you're illuminating cool. the scene using a texture, which is super cool. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Here we, oh yeah, you, well, when you said we're going to go into the more crazy things, you meant it. <laughs> that is I sure incredible. Did. I love how everything is so moody. Oh, okay, just a blob. So one, one, thing, one thing I like to do is uh, here I've created a simple sphere and I'm uh, applying a mirror um, material because I'm using that as a reference mm -hmm. because a mirror ball essentially is reflecting the whole scene. And I'm just doing that to, to kind of show you a little bit better what's happening, you know, in, in the scene, how what kind of lights we're getting up from the left hand side. So yeah, just a, just a reference. And I think at this point, I've 
I've shown everything there is to show <laughs> in my <laughs> mind when it comes to studio lighting. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go more into compositing your scene with an actual photo. Uh, and so there are a couple of elements here which are important to, to understand. Specifically, uh, you need to match the lighting in your scene to the photo you're using in the background. So that needs to match uh, in order to make a believable composition. If you don't do that, your 3D objects are, you know, they're not going to feel composed in a, in a nice and seamless way with the, you know, with the photo. And so yeah. we do have some, uh, some really cool features here, which is essentially one stop solution. It's called match image. And I'll mm -hmm. show you that in a, in a quick second where you can extract the light from a photo. And not only that, you can also match the perspective of your camera to the photo you're using in the background, oh, so, which is another cool thing. Yeah, so we're using machine learning to analyze the photo in the mm -hmm. background and to you know kind of match the, your 3D camera perspective with the photo. So this wow. is what, what I'm going to show you. So check out the mirror ball. Right now, it's just a mm -hmm. random environment light. But when I click match image, it is going to change altogether. So the perspective is going to change. And there you go. What? So you see, <laughs> right? So now the perspective is matching the photo. And also you can see in the mirror ball how now we're getting reflections from that photo uh, as well. And so those are some of the things, some of the little tricks you can use to make a believable, you know, a comp composite shot of your 3D elements and the, the photo. So that's the trick that, uh, that you can use. That is the proper wizardry. Like also Michael put it in the chat magic and like everyone's agreeing. I'm agreeing. It's that's fantastic. This is incredible. I remember I remember I think it was in, <laughs> in CS5 or Photoshop where you were able to to like um pinpoint different parts of, of an image and then it would auto generate you a grid and, and uh the the focal points and oh, everything. But this yes, is I remember that. way beyond that. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Oh wow! Look how far it's very cool. Came. I mean, and the, the beauty is that you really don't need to have a you know a highly technical background. You don't have to be a three really professional in order to utilize something like this. Yeah. Uh, you know, we are trying to cover a range of different skill sets. Uh, democratize three D as uh, you know, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> I'm so yeah, flabbergasted. I'm genuinely still flabbergasted because, as I said, like the the example that I just brought in, that was already mind blowing back then. Like CS five is ages ago, and like I think I started with the with the with CS three back then. But this is complete next level at this point. I'm wow! Glad, I'm glad you think so. <laughs> So yeah, just like that, you can, you know, kind of compose, give some context, right? Like mm -hmm. now yeah. it's, like we've seen that, you know, creating a studio shot, it's a one thing, but now, you know, you can just uh, you know, kind of level up your portfolio shot with, you know, uh, just kind of adding uh, a background photo or stuff like that. And it's easy, you know, you don't have to build the whole environment in 3D. Yeah. You can combine, it's a hybrid model of photography and 3D. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, all right, and so this is going to be the final stage where mm -hmm. we're actually going to bring in a physical 3D model of a terrain mm -hmm. and then use some substance materials to actually generate uh, you know, more geometry on, on top of what we have. Yeah. So we're going to use displacement uh, and I'll show you how you can, how substance material can drive uh, essentially uh, geometry um, of, of a 3D object. It's super cool. So you don't have to spend a lot of time, you know, kind of working on every little detail of your scene. Yeah. All right, so I've dropped the photo. I've extracted the, the light out of it using mm -hmm. match image. Mm -hmm. uh, and now let's drop in a 3D object and uh, see how we can create a slightly more complex composition because now it's a, it's a fully three-dimensional scene. So we're yep. not, we are using a photo, but it's just a, you know, a background photo of the sky. Yep. Messing around with the light, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's the camera, you know, just kind of changing the focal length and going mm -hmm. after a long lens. Yeah. Uh, because I want to remove the perspective distortion. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and now you can see I'm dropping a physical 3D model which is a simple terrain that I made. Mm -hmm. um, yep, 
you can find a bunch of those for free. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. On the internet. Yeah, it's super simple. So if you want to use something like this, you can. Okay, so you know, really building a bit of a scene around the the object that the like the hero exactly. Object. Um, Something that looks a little bit more mm -hmm. interesting uh, in that sense. Okay, and I so bet we'll show you range of. Huh? I bet Go we'll ahead. get some texture for that uh, as well because right now it just looks like a pile of snow. <laughs> I'll just I'll just keep it like this. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely gonna apply some 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 materials here. Yeah, there we go. Already starting. Cool. Yeah, it looks a little bit better, but mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely make it way better. I think you mm -hmm. guys are going to love it. Uh, creating a scene like this, uh, it does require a lot of tweaking. You're you know, just kind of moving mm -hmm. your objects around, moving your camera. You know, you're never really satisfied. Um, so yeah, you'll see me you know, doing this, these things uh, quite a bit. And I'm mm -hmm. going to turn off the ray tracing just to see, okay, uh, how is this going to look like, you know, when I start adding lights and uh, mm -hmm. how the shadows, f how the shadows from the the hero asset are going to be cast onto the terrain, so all of those things. So here you can see oh, that, that I'm going to try to find uh, uh, some, you know, slightly more complex material from uh, Adobe Substance 3D assets. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with this uh, rocky terrain, which I think is a 3D scan of an actual surface. Yeah. And so we're going to use that uh, on top of our terrain. And as you can see, everything in Stager is drag and drop. You can drag and drop images, 3D models, even soft materials. So I'm just going to drop this material on top of our terrain. And in Very a second, cool. it's going to be applied. There you go. Yes. Mm. So now we're getting somewhere. Um, changing the size of, uh, you know, of the terrain. So now it looks smaller. Changing the resolution. So you can upscale, so you can change the resolution, mm -hmm. uh, you know, up and down. So now it's 2K, so it's going to look more sharp. And all of those properties you can see on the right hand side, those properties of the material. This is something that you can expose in Substance Designer. So if you're somebody who can engineer those materials, uh, you can pretty much create anything you like. It's, wow. It gets crazy. Yeah. yeah. And now what I've done, I have turned on displacement. So this material is now generating actual geometry. So if I zoom in close, you can see now we have individual rocks, which, uh, so it's not only a texture now, it's actual geometry. Yeah. Incredible. It's super cool because uh, you'll see when I create a sunlight, with, which is a very directional light source. Mm -hmm. So instead of having a plain texture, now that light is going to be broken as it hits actual geometry. So we're mm -hmm. going to get really sophisticated shadows coming from all of those little elements, you know, the, the rocks and, uh, and whatnot. So this is why it really, it really stands out when you have actual geometry. But yeah. building geometry like this manually, I'll tell you, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. 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 I don't, I don't know. Yeah. No. Well, you don't have to. You can just drop a material and have it done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, <laughs> but I can imagine that, like doing it traditionally, you could say it would take forever uh, uh, to just sculpt this in ZBrush stuff like that. You mm -hmm. can, of course, but then you have a full control. I mean, and the mm -hmm. base of this terrain. Granted, that's something that I sculpted in ZBrush. You know, I, I definitely yeah. wanted to have these mounds, these little hills. Uh, you know, the way I wanted them. But so this is what I'm saying, like I have a sunlight, it's kind of casting uh, long shadows and you can see how it's just kind of bouncing around mm -hmm. all of these rocks. That's really good. So the system I have in this scene, the, the light system is very simple. Mm -hmm. Essentially, I have the environment light, which has been extracted from the photo using match image. And then I've dropped uh, a, a simple sunlight which is kind of coming from the right hand side because it, from the photo, I can see it's sun, uh, like a sunset uh, sky. So, you know, long shadows, the, the sun is pretty low on yeah. the horizon and that kind of creates a dramatic effect. 
now I'm playing with the material. I want to make it a little bit more shiny. So mm -hmm. I'm dropping down roughness on all, all of these little rocks. So it looks almost like a like maybe it, it was raining, you know? Mm. So now we have a muddy terrain. That's incredible. <laughs> Still messing around uh, mm -hmm. with the position of our little robot or drone. By the way, this drone he has been modeled uh, using Substance Modeler. Mm -hmm. So that's the fifth app which is coming. We are super nice. excited. Uh, it's our creation tool. Cool. Hell yeah. It's... <laughs> I'm all in for Did you see how depth to fill was that? Uh, I said I'm I'm all in for that honestly with with that going all on in Adobe because I I just I just love how intuitive Adobe products are and so well that's that's kind of the the hope you know that yeah. this is going to be approachable because yeah. as I mentioned 3D is it has a very steep learning curve and a lot of people try it and they're like ah I can't mm -hmm. really deal yeah. with this yeah you almost need to be you know uh, an engineer in order to understand like all <laughs> these little tweaks and parameters and i mean i've been in this area for 15 years and trust me it's never easy it's just there's always something mm -hmm. yeah and now we're gonna we are trying to take this away all that complexity and just make it fun you know like yeah so you can just play around <laughs> yes Almost done with the scene, almost done with the composition, just kind of uh, doing final tricks, positioning this little guy, yeah. picking the lights. The final stage is going to be in Photoshop. We're, I'm going to show you uh, some of the post-processing uh, you know, uh, tools and mm -hmm. you know, not tools, but tricks which you can use to make your render really uh, stand out. Um, and we're even going to fake depth to field, we're going to fake some haze. So all of those things which uh, uh, you can do in Photoshop, because Photoshop mm -hmm. is still the, the master of uh, photo manipulation. And I mean, rendering is essentially a synthetic photo. It's, uh, it's, it's very similar to a regular photo that you might have. I believe these are the final tweaks with uh, with the sunlight. I want to get more of the highlights, mm -hmm. almost like mm -hmm. a rim light on 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 the on these little mounds, and you can see that now. So going after something really dramatic here, okay, an epic shot of our <laughs> drone showing up. <laughs> nice. I I still can't get over the fact that this was just thrown together in a couple of minutes. Um, Easy, right? Most most of it wasn't was just you know the computer did all the work. Mm -hmm. We just slapped on a texture and then was like, okay, boom, make it three D. Yeah, mater materials are are incredible at this point. Just being able to to have a computer generate a random array of of different tiles and just model them together and actually making it's pretty incredible. Yeah. That's... I'll tell you, like we're using machine learning in almost every single component uh, in our tools. Yeah. For instance, uh, when you're producing the final rendering, we're using a very sophisticated denoising, uh, you yeah. know, uh, algorithm. So you can wait for your render to be maybe fifty percent done, and then you, uh, denoising jumps in and it just kind of calculates everything, uh, you know, to uh, to where it looks like it, it actually has been rendering, the, you know, throughout the whole process. So it's saving you a lot of time, you know, uh, computer is trying to almost guess how the final render is going to look like, uh, yeah. and it saves tons of time. And then finally, I think I'm going to drop just another light on the left hand side to just kind of expose the, you know, to add some rim light on that uh, little part of the of our object here and yep. uh, we'll call it done and then we'll jump into Photoshop and that's just going to play with, uh, you know, some of the some little tricks that I'm using in Photoshop to make it really Instagrammable. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I love how there's this weird divide in the, in the art community when it comes to, to rim lights and I'm just all in for them because they just make things look really nice. Yeah. Oh. It's almost like cheating, you know? <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Is that why they hate it? A little bit, a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I don't know. I love it. Uh, but Absolutely. also, you know, yeah, I'm always going after something that looks kind of dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. it's fun. <laughs> you spend all this time, you know, modeling your object, like, you know, you yeah. might as well, you know, kind of complement the silhouette of it. Exactly. Uh, exactly. I feel like it's the same with ambient occlusion. Mm -hmm. Because ambient occlusion really like brings in every single detail that you have, those yep. contact shadows. And I'm definitely overusing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, getting a lot of critiques from my colleagues for, um, for mm. doing that. I'm like, lot. dude, it doesn't even look real anymore. I don't care. It's, <laughs> it's, it's cool. It's not about real, it's about epic. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly, exactly, that's right. It's, if we wanted real, we would do it in the real world, but we're not. <laughs> yes, just uh, take a camera and that's totally legit. Yeah. All right, so this Hell is the yeah. final render. Uh, oh, wow. And then I'm jumping into Photoshop. So now we're going to play around with some, some, of the, some of the things that we have. So when you render out your image, uh, Stager actually gives you a couple of very careful layers. And one of them is uh, called the Death Pass. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this depth pass allows you to dynamically, well, not dynamically, but you can uh, you can create depth of field after the fact, after it's been rendered. So you can use lens blur in Photoshop to uh, to create this uh, you know uh, this depth of field. And actually, in After Effects, you can use the same uh, type of depth uh, depth map to animate depth of field so yep. you can go back and forth uh change the focus uh which is really incredible mm. because depth of field is a very expensive effect in 3d and yeah. you can do it for cheap in photoshop just by using this uh you know depth pass and you can see that, that this is what i'm doing right now i'm using depth map as a source to you know kind of uh, create this uh, fake uh quote unquote um uh, depth of field and uh, I'm just gonna play with some of the some of the uh, little things that you can do. So that I'm also using uh, depth map to create mm -hmm. haze. So this is uh, something we call distant fog. Yeah. So here, for instance, I can tweak the alpha, which is a depth pass, in order to control the density of the haze. If that makes sense. Yes. By by adding contrast to the depth map. You can essentially affect the you know the alpha uh, of this color fill, and the yep. color fill is essentially haze. I know it. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> this is honestly so good. I mean, it's another this way in, to in... to cheat. Uh, you know, because yeah. uh, you can of course you can add haze in 3D. You cannot do that in Stager just yet, mm. but also it's an expensive uh, you know effect. Yeah. And with Photoshop, it's very cheap because it's just a layer. Exactly. Uh, with, uh, with that map alpha, and that's what it is. Right now, I'm adding uh, a really cool, um, you know, trick which is called chromatic aberration. So you can use co uh, um, <laughs> lens correction filter to add lens distortion effect. So yeah. this is something that happens in real photography as well, especially cheap cameras with cheap lenses. So if you take a look at the photo from the '90s or '80s. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of color bleeds, almost like yeah. a, like a bad print when you have yeah. RGB or uh, you know uh, they're kind of you know um, misaligned, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you look at the edges of your render, you can see a little bit of color bleeding, um, you know. And so this is just a, a tiny little effect, but it goes a long way uh, yeah. to kind of bring a more <laughs> photographic feel to your photo. And it's another effect that people really hate because it you know, kind of looks cheap, but it's, also kind of cool. It's been overused uh, for, for like the last six years or so, with just yes. people <laughs> using it more and more and more and eventually going into a direction where you have like properly magenta and cyan, just like mismatching. Yes. But so on the I other like hand, if used correctly... Mm -hmm. It should be used in a very subtle manner. You know? yeah. Just don't yeah, go yeah. overboard. Don't go overboard. Uh, this is Camera Raw, and Camera Raw is, of course, my fame, uh, my uh, most favorite, most favorite, uh, <laughs> my favorite filter where you can really tweak uh, the the overall look. You can add clarity. You can play with the shadows. It's something that it actually is very similar uh, when you're posting something on Instagram. We have a very similar set of. Uh, parameters, right? I know so these you things. Can... <laughs> I'm, I'm far yes. from a graphic artist or anything visual, so this this I can work with. <laughs> this I know. But 
But there's a parity, uh, you know, you can add, uh, you know, the clarity, you can uh, drop down the brightness, you can make something that looks almost like HDR photo in a way. Mm -hmm. And you also should be careful here, because if you overdo it, then, you know, it looks kind of over the top. And that's essentially what happened here. Uh, I'm, I'm doing it intentionally, just uh, to, to really, you know, kind of show you what's the difference, you know, uh, before and after. And then finally, I'm going to add a color lookup file. Um, which uh, is a quick way to, uh, you know, do some kind of color corrections. Photoshop mm -hmm. co uh, comes with a lot of, uh, you know, color lookup files, and you can find a bunch of them um, online. And again, this is something that's called filters in Instagram. So it's pretty much the same thing. It's, uh, you know, kind of set of, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, levels, curves, uh, uh, color filters, which are packaged in one thing, and you can just drop it on top, and change the overall look of your render like quickly in seconds. And this is something that's used in film quite yeah. often, you know, when you have, for instance, Matrix, you know, how it has this green, uh, you know, mm -hmm. tonality. That, that this is something that they do using those kind of uh, color lookup files. Well, I don't know. I haven't been working on it, but it's <laughs> my guess. <laughs> that's how you could imitate it. Yeah, exactly. This, this is how you can fake it. Uh, another thing that I'm faking uh, is Bloom. So essentially what I've done, I've duplicated this layer. Uh, I, I'm using Gaussian Blur and I drop down the, you know, the, the overall brightness. And then I'm using uh, Linear Dodge uh, blending mode uh, and I drop down opacity. So now you have this Bloom effect. And so this is our original render, how it used to look like. I think I'm, uh, uh, I'm tweaking the haze because it's pretty intense. Mm -hmm. Maybe changing the the um, the color so it looks a bit more warm. I think mm -hmm. because it was pretty intense, so we couldn't really see the sky. Oh, I guess I'm going with some something toxic. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a wasteland, you know. Yeah. So I'm using smart layers, uh, smart objects, or smart mm -hmm. smart layers. And so now if I save this, all the, you know, all the filters are going to be reapplied. And oh, so yeah. this Look is especially, now. It, it looks so different. Uh huh. So this is before and, uh, this is after. Wow. So this is going to be the, the, the final result of, uh, of this, uh, portfolio shot. Hell and yeah. with this, uh, we're going to conclude our demo. I hope this was interesting for you guys. This, wow. All this in 45 minutes. That's incredible. incredible. <laughs> well, it took way, way more time to actually record. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but wow. that, that, that's actually pretty mind blowing. Um, as I said, like it's, it's fantastic to see where we landed with basically computer learned things that eventually take off major parts of, of what we used to do and crunch through and yeah, ah, just quality of life improvements. It's great. So yeah, essentially the goal is to uh, you know provide people with more time to be creative and yeah. you know less tweaking settings around. You know nobody wants to do that. Exactly. Of course, sometimes you have to. You know if you are working on animation, you need to really optimize the render. Uh, so you know so you yeah. don't wait for years <laughs> for this animation <laughs> to be done. But often you can save yourself a lot of time, and these these are the kind of tools that we're trying to provide to our users. Hell yeah. Oh, this is great. This is really, really good. Mm -hmm. oh, thank um, you. How, how long have you been working on, on this particular... Um, because Substance 3D, with its, at the moment, four and soon to be five um, yes. different, different little pathways, how long have you been working on, on Substance 3D altogether? So I've joined Adobe, I would say, five years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, back then, we only had one app, which was yep. called Dimension. And Dimension yep. evolved into Stager. So it's, it's a brand new tool, which is more catered uh, to, you know, professional level, uh, you know, um, well, professionals in general, but mm -hmm. also, you know, trying to cover a range of different, uh, you know, expertise. Yep. Uh, but uh, at some point, we acquired Algorithmic. And so we, uh, we then uh, got new apps uh, into our ecosystem, or maybe better to say that Dimension, Dimension, now Stager, became part of the Substance ecosystem. And so we have, uh, you know, we have Designer, we have Sampler, we have Painter, and now Stager is a new player, and uh, the, the newest one is going to be Modeler. 
I'm very so, yeah, excited. Yeah, it's been for years in one. development. Ah, oh, that's gonna be so good. As I it's said, super cool. Huh? It is. It's going to be super cool. I'm stoked about it. I I can't imagine. Like as I said earlier, like for me as a as an illustrator and um, somebody who works mainly in 2D. It is. I'm. I'm always looking for for ways to you know improve the workflow and being a little bit faster in some stretches of the of the way, and that sounds just like the tools to to really get there. I really hope so, Vlad. I think we're pretty much at the end of our time. If I'm, we got five more minutes. But in the meantime, just quickly jumping in here. Thank you so much for Eddie Level, our partner who made this session possible. Yes. Really, uh, they asked Vlad to join us for the summit, and I think it's been a wonderful session. I learned so much about a topic I had no clue about. <laughs> um, but really, it felt like okay. If I just play around with it, I could get decent results out of it quickly, which is exactly you described it. What you're trying to achieve with this uh, software. You really can, and we have plenty of tutorials made by my amazing colleague Wes, uh, which uh, you can look uh, online. So just go to YouTube, Google Stager, if you want to learn this app, and uh, yeah, it'll get you going in you know in a few hours, essentially. It's so good to actually have something presented that gets both the newcomers and you know quote unquote veterans in the in the field still very excited about it it's just it, it speaks volumes of what's happening so that's that's mm -hmm. just really good vlad thank you so much for joining us it's been it's a pleasure guys thank you for having me <laughs> thank you so much for being here um and as for the rest of the day we're going to have another session where um yeah, sponsored by or like brought to us by AD Level, where Ryan Kingsley and is gonna join us to skip the art school circus. That's gonna be exciting. And I think after that, we already have our goodbye. We already have our goodbye afterwards, yeah, but we gotta stick here for another couple of seconds. I just heard. Oh, we heard. I, I heard. In this case, <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna continue real quick, Vlad. Um, before I came to you, uh, to to Adobe for um, for Substance, what exactly have you been doing before? Oh wow! <laughs> so I've been in this uh, industry for fifteen years. Mm -hmm. So I've been all around the place. I've been a contractor for uh, for many many years. So you know I kind of worked throughout the Bay Area for mm -hmm. you know Google, Facebook, and all of those uh, you know giants. Uh, I have been working for Restoration Harbor, which mm -hmm. is this fancy furniture company, and that was a you know really cool experience. I've been working for Oracle, so been oh, yeah. all around the place. Yeah. I finally settled settled here. Adobe is my home, and uh, love it here. Hell yeah! Oh, this is super super. I'm trying to keep myself PG because I'm I'm excited, but at the same time I need to need to not drop too many f bombs. Um, this is great. This is really great. Yeah, no, because um, we've been. I mean, the Art and Animation Summit, um, of course, is is trying to give stages to to you know all all paths of the of the creative spectrum, and to have somebody here to you know speak about a product that is obviously mind blowing. Um, that has obviously been coming in with so much experience and has walked that many paths um, is really, I mean, for me personally, humbling and to, to, you know, just being able to, to, you know, bounce thoughts and being able to talk, it's just everything. And that's what, what basically the summit is also about to connect these people and to, to connect creative minds and to, and that's kind of the, the core value of the whole thing to share knowledge. And this is what's yeah, so great exactly. about it. And hopefully inspire people, you know? Exactly. Exactly that. Yeah. Um, if anyone in the chat still has any question left for Vlad, now is the time to drop them because time is running out, actually. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, uh, definitely right. post in the chat. Michael and I are going to try to answer them. Uh, if you want to see more of, you know, what you can do in Stager, of course, you have, you know, YouTube. You can also check some of the, you know, uh, social media like Instagram, just Google, uh, you know, uh, Substance 3D Stager and you can see what people are doing. Um, there's a variety of different stuff from product design to something purely creative. Hell yeah. Exciting. 
<laughs> okay, so Michael just dropped in the link to your YouTube channel. So if anyone really is interested in learning uh, about Substance 3D Stager and the other programs, you will find them on that channel. I also just got the note that we can now finish the session off for real. Very cool. Yeah. So All right. Again, thank you so much, Vladimir, for joining us. I've learned a lot. It was fantastic. Yeah.